Welcome back to the MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, I'm here with Steve. We're talking Final Cut Pro, and you're gonna do a little bit about uh, going forward, moving forward. Well, Final Cut 7, uh, legacy Final Cut, they had this- You're gonna talk about Final Cut 7? Well, only as a means of uh, a means nostalgia. Nostalgia. Ah, okay. Um, not because I never Back use in the it. Old days. I wouldn't use it, but there's, some, <laughs> there's one tool in it that I liked, uh -huh. uh, and that was the track forward select tool. You guys remember that? You work with tracks? Yeah, T and TT. You remember like tracks? The little double arrow? Yeah. yeah. Yes, T, 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 T would make an angle, arrow, okay. all these arrows. So, yes. Well, there are no tracks in Final Cut Pro 10, but there are times when I still want to select things when I'm zoomed in. Select more than the clip that you're over. That's right. In fact, okay. let's, let's look at that. So I'm going to zoom in here. And by the way, I have a keyboard map to just the plus and minus key, so I don't have to hold down the command key. Because it's so much work to it hold is, down the command key. It is. Well. It's just uh, extra work. <laughs> so I'm zoomed here. And let's say I wanted to open up a space here because, you know, I'm going to, the timing's not working. I want to open up like a four-second hole or something. Uh -huh. And I just want to select everything to the right of my skimmer position right now. Okay. Right now, in Final Cut 7 thinking, you just press T or TT, and you'd select and every, it would select everything downstream. All tracks forward. Right. Uh -huh. Well, there, like I said, there's no track. So let's look at a couple ways you can do this. Well, okay. one way would be to, uh, you know, to zoom out, and from where you want to select, you do that. Well, that defeats the purpose of wanting to select while you're zoomed in. You don't want to zoom out to do that. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a, a better way to do this if you're zoomed in. Again, I can't see the end of the timeline is open the timeline index. In this, in this case, I'm gonna press Command, Shift, two, 2, right? Uh -huh. Now, I know that the playhead is, or the skimmer's over the Billy medium close-up shot, right? So I just need to locate that clip. Which there's a line that shows there's you right line. where the skimmer is. Right, so if you click on these, it will select the clip that you're the clicking on. The playhead will jump to that clip. The, the uh -huh. playhead will jump to that clip, and, and, and a lot of times it, well, in and this case, it, it'll select it. See? Okay. So there it is, see? Mm -hmm. So I want to select everything to the right of okay. that Billy medium close-up. Okay. So I'm just going to use a standard Mac selection convention by holding the shift key and selecting everything from that point down. Great. So now you just selected every clip from the playhead to the end of the project. Right. And to prove it, if I zoom out, you can see everything is selected. Yep. selected. Now the point is, all I need to do is press P to bring up the position tool. and put my position tool over the selection and then just drag. And now I'm uh, I'm getting a gap clip being okay. placed between the previous clip and the one I'm in the selection I'm moving. So now I just move it down and now I have that placeholder. Now I want to see how long this gap is, this gap clip is. So I'm going to switch back to my selection arrow by pressing A, selecting a gap clip and pressing Control D. We can see there in the dashboard that it's a little over a second long. I mm -hmm. want to make this exactly four seconds, so I'm going to type four, four, period, return. And now if I zoom out, you can see that I have a four second gap, a timing gap. So you've managed to move everything from the playhead down four seconds to make room for something you might want to put there later. That's or right. You just, maybe you just want to go to black for some reason with that right there. Well, that's what a lot of times you want to do this. You want to put in timing slugs because mm -hmm. You know, you want to put a, you know, maybe another set of clips there. Or hey, you're building chunks of a show. I do this all the time where I'm being little, building little chunks, and I need a separator. No, I'm going from one chunk to the next to the next until I put it all together. Right. Okay. Now, there's even a faster way to do all this. I know we just showed you the timeline index method, mm -hmm. but there's even a better way. In fact, you're the one that showed me this method. I didn't even think about this. I'm going to undo those last series of steps. Okay, so here we go. Now, notice... Nothing selected. I'm going to close the timeline index, mm -hmm. and I still want to select everything from this medium close-up to the end. In fact, I'll even zoom in a little bit further. And here's the key. All I have to do is insert a gap clip at the playhead. Because you've got a magnetic timeline. Be and so here, it's not going to put anything out of sync. That's right? right. Nothing's going to go out of sync. So if I go up here and I choose, let's see, uh, edit, insert, Insert generator. Insert generator and gap or option W. So there it is. There's my gap and I can change the duration. But here's the thing. Because the, it's a magnetic timeline like you just mentioned, everything south of that medium close up or everything south of that gap clip or downstream gets pushed with it. It pushed it all out and it kept everything in sync. All those connected clips stayed in the same yeah, this, place, this is the, the beauty of the, thing. you're seeing the beauty of the magnetic timeline right here. Look at that. Yep. So now I can do stuff with that, that, that gap clip. So again, it's, it's thinking 
a lot differently about how you would approach something. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to have tracks, or in this case, you don't have to have a track select forward tool to accomplish the same thing. To be able thing. to do the same thing. You just think about it a little bit differently. You don't necessarily have to select all those to begin with. That's right. Cool. So, Very nice. So there it is. There's my little gap slug clip, select clip forward trick. <laughs> track gap, yeah. trackless gap push thing. That's right. Push thing. Excellent. Thingy. Steve, awesome. Thank you. Uh, if you want more information about using Final Cut Pro 10 or Motion DaVinci Resolve, check out RippleTraining.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter at Ripple Training. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on MacBreak Studio.